We'll now go to uh, Ms. Velasquez of New York for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chair Powell, at your press conference last week, you stated, and I quote, the committee is completely unified in the need to get inflation down to 2% and will do whatever it takes to get it down to 2% over time. Some analysts have interpreted this statement as the FOMC's willingness to trigger a recession in order to get inflation to 2%. How would you respond if this is a fair and accurate interpretation? So our statutory goals are price stability and maximum employment, and we are dedicated to using our tools to achieving those. In the case of uh, employment, we still have historically low unemployment rates and high employment rates now, high participation, a very strong labor market. We're very far from our, our uh, inflation target of 2%, and we're very focused on getting back to 2%. And how does the FOMC take into consideration the impact of rising interest rates on LMI communities and small businesses when determining monetary policies? So our, we only have one interest rate to raise or lower. It's not true, but mainly one main interest rate to raise or lower, and it applies to everyone. But I would say that inflation hits LMI communities and people generally um, at the lower end of the income spectrum much harder than, than people in the middle or at the high end because high inflation you're, uh, can get you into trouble right away if you're living on a fixed income just to cover the basic necessities. So it is for the benefit of those people that we must get inflation under control. It's better for the benefit of all Americans but particularly for those people. And we keep that in mind as we are strongly committed to getting inflation back down to 2% over time. Well, and they, they, they are the same people that are having a hard time accessing loans. The same with small businesses. Uh, Chair Powell, Vice Chair Barr's uh, report on the Fed's review of Silicon Valley Bank states that while there was regulatory tailoring conducted in response to S2155, there was also, and this is the part that really concerns me, a cultural shift at the Fed under the direction of the previous vice chair for supervision, Randy Curls. According to the report, this shift included pressure to reduce burdens on firms meet a higher burden of proof for a supervisory conclusion and a need to accumulate more evidence than in the past. As chair during that period, were you aware of this culture of shift and the impact it was creating? So I, I think we learned from the uh, Silicon Valley failure and the others that there is going to be a need for stronger supervision and also regulation for banks of that size. And I'm committed to learning the right lessons from this exercise and to forthrightly implementing but, uh, changes. Uh, were you aware of the culture of shift? So I, 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 I can't really uh, characterize it that way. Certainly I was aware that we were trying to avoid excessive regulatory burden. That so do you disagree with thing. Chair Barr's report? in that respect. I, I, I'm sure that the people who wrote the report were accurately reporting what they, what they heard from back how, in the day. How often were you meeting with Vice Chair Quirrells? I, you know, I, I reasonably frequently, we, you know, we sat quite near each other. And uh, never discussed the culture of shift. I, I, I didn't say that. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't remember it, it, it. The way you're describing it is not what I recall. I recall Vice Chair uh, Quarles talking about uh, things like focusing on the really important issues and not getting diverted into other. So the, the way it was described by Vice Chair Barr is not what you recall. Well, so what I had no steps? part in. I, I said I had no part in preparing the report. I'm I'm confident that the people, that the staff who worked on the report reported accurately what they heard. I'm I'm sure that that's right. So what steps? did you take proactively to meet with regulatory and supervisory staff? Well, I think we're taking significant steps now. We're, you know, we're as you know, under Vice Chair Barr's leadership, we're looking carefully at these events and asking ourselves 
what do we need to do for with supervision? And I, you know, I think there is a, a point to be made that um, there are situations in which we need to more be more forceful and more proactive. Not in all situations, but in some. In regulation, I think we're learning that uh, we need to update our thinking around liquidity regulation, which was based on a certain speed of bank runs, which now looks to be uh, outdated. My time has expired. Gently, 